Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio for the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. This is the Profit Break. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes, and you're going to be well on your way to improving not only yourself, but your profitability. Now, if you're like most small businesses today, you're probably wondering what to do with all those email addresses you've been gathering. You may even be asking, is email marketing really even a good strategy today, given the popularity of social media? I've got great news. Help us here today. On today's show, we're going to visit with Miss Leanne Marie Webster, who is the founder of Email with Heart and Lead Machine Lab. Now, she's the author of Email Marketing Mastery and host of Client Attraction Forum. Now, Leanne is a former attorney. We're not going to hold that against her. She turned international <laughs> keynote speaker and entrepreneur. Uh, Leanne, thank you for joining us today. So excited about having you with us at our Bowl Expo. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here, and I can't wait to see everyone in person in June. <laughs> Good. Well, hey, before we dig into the uh, some tips for our viewers today, a couple of things we need to share. You're a fascinating young lady. Learned a lot about you as we were getting to know each other and preparing to, to join us there. I understand that you traveled the U.S. for a year as a digital nomad. Now, first of all, share with our, our viewers what is a digital nomad and how do you pull that off? Yeah, it's um, so digital nomad essentially means that you don't have a home base. I was I was home free, not homeless, as I like to say. Um, and so it meant that I was traveling. I literally lived out of a suitcase for an entire year. Fascinating. So, I mean, in that year, I mean, how many places did you go and what I mean? So you were working, but working, I mean, you were probably working remote before working remote was cool. I was, yes, this was 2015 before everyone knew what Zoom was. Um, and it was a, a key part of my business. My business has always been digital um, for the most part. So that's part of what allowed me to do the traveling. Um, over the, plan of, the span of the year, I went to 23 different cities. I slept in 46 different beds. And um, I think I took 320 some Uber or Lyft rides. <laughs> Fascinating. Amazing. I, I, I love that. <laughs> now, again, um, you know, as you and I were planning to gather together to talk today about uh, th this topic here, you said, well, I, I can't get with you right now. I've got a little trip planned. And most time people are going to visit family or they're going to do something with someone. But no, you climbed Kilimanjaro uh, and, and scaled that. Tell us a little bit about that experience. I think Gerald even got a picture for us. Fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. This is, this is so fresh right now. It is the world's highest freestanding mountain. It's uh, 19,341 feet at the top. Um, it was an incredible experience. It take, I, I did the short route, so it took us five days, which was three and a half up and one and a half down. Um, the air is very thin up there. It's, uh, that was what's startling is uh, when you're making your way towards the top, the pace that you're going is literally step, step, step for like eight hours. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, well, congratulations. What an incredible experience, uh, uh, world traveler. So uh, excited to have you with us. So let's jump into today's topic there. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? Email yeah. is one of the most traditional forms of marketing. Is email dead? Is it even still relevant today? It's so relevant, I can barely stand it. Um, you know, here's the thing with email, and as opposed to social media, you know, a lot of people get caught up in social media. They want to increase their followers, and social media is great. The challenge is you don't own that platform, so it's kind of like building your house on rented land. Um, you know, you're at the mercy of the algorithm and the you know the platform determining who is going to see your message and when they're going to see your message. And we've all experienced this where we post something and sometimes four people see it and sometimes 400 people see it and you have no control over that. But with your email list, you own it. You always know you're gonna get directly to your people no matter what. Yeah, that, that is a key point and, and a great thought that you, 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 you own the relationship with the guest whereas you're dependent on a third party to help establish that relationship with the guests when you're dealing with that. So comparing the two there, uh, are, as small business owners, are we better off trying to build a social media following or an email list? Where should we focus our efforts and time on? I would 100% build the email list before I would build the social media following. 
um, for that reason we just discussed that you own it. And also, you know, you will always be able to reach out to your email list. Whereas, you know, we've had experiences where Facebook goes down and Facebook also owns Instagram and they also own WhatsApp. And so if one platform goes down like that, then you're cut off from your people versus if you have your email list, you know, you can always message and um, reach out to your people via email. Yeah. So we've established that the, uh, the, the death of email has been greatly exaggerated, that it's still a That's very, right. very viable uh, <laughs> channel for us to be a part of as small business owners. Uh, what does it mean to email with heart? I mean, I know that that's your uh, acronym that you use. So what does that mean? The, so it, the short um, version of it is the H in heart stands for how people get on your list. It's critically important that people get on permissively. Uh, the E in heart is for engaging content, making sure that you are delivering content in a way that um, the has your readers want to open up that email and want to, to see what you're saying. The A for speaking in your authentic voice, which is making sure that you're being congruent with, with your brand and with your messaging and that you're um, being your true self, you know, the, the true self of the business. The R is for the rhythm which is how often to email. It's a question I get a lot, and making sure you're being consistent with your emails. And then the T is for technology, and that really speaks to some of these stats that you'll want to make sure that you follow um, so that you can know whether you're, what results you're generating and then how to tweak things in order to generate better results for yourself. Right. And I know you're going to uh, unpack that uh, to a much deeper dive when you're with us in Orlando at a bowl expo. So we're going to dive deeper. But for our viewers today, let's start with that H. Right. If we're going to focus, we have to have people to talk with first. If we're going to start that relationship. Right. What's the best way if we're struggling with growing our email list to get started? Well, you know, the best way is to, you know, those people who are in your centers right now, you know, that are coming regularly, especially if they're part of a league, but really any customer who comes through your door, having a mechanism for getting their email address and then staying in touch with them. And it could just be as simple as, you know, when they're, when they're making the payment, when they're, if they're filling out any information, um, you know, being able to capture that email and let them know that you're going to add them to your email list and then being consistent with following up with it after that. Yeah, and I, and I hope folks uh, uh, heard that from you, uh, Leanne, because I, I think it's a critical uh, point there. For many small businesses, and certainly in our space, business is good, and, and uh, we're struggling with staff, but we have to find that time, and we have to dedicate the efforts to try to collect those email addresses, because while revenue is good today, we know that businesses ebb and flows and cycles, and at some point in time, it's gonna turn, and we're really gonna need exactly. those email addresses. Exactly. And with any marketing effort, you know, you don't want to be in that space where it's like you really, really need it. And then that's when you're sending the email, because if you're sending the email, because it's like, oh, my gosh, we, you know, business is down and we need to generate more sales. That energy actually comes through in the message. And it feels very different than if you've been consistently messaging your people and and talking with them, you know, sharing information that they need or that they want, sharing fun tips about what's going on in the pro bowling world or, you know, sharing insights on, you know, Sally, who's been working at the center for 25 years. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different, we'll, and we'll go into this in uh, Orlando, there's a lot of different ways you can do the content, but if you can just do that twice a month, that's only 24 messages a year. And if you can be consistent in doing that, then you won't need to have that kind of panic where it's like, we got to get people in. Now we need to figure out what to, what email to send them. Yes. Thank you. Please folks hear Leanne. She climbed Kilimanjaro. She knows what she's talking about. Okay. Build that email <laughs> list now, even though it feels like you don't need it, it's better to have it. And then when you need it, you're, you can start to access. So thank you for reinforcing what, what we certainly uh, uh, believe in. So we built the list. Let's talk about, we've got that email out and we've deployed it. So why do so many emails go unopened? Well, there's a, there's a few different reasons, but one of the main reasons is when people, you know, think, think about your own email box. Let's just take it to the personal level. In your email box right now, there are emails that are uh, non-urgent that you don't have to open, but you open, right? So it's not from a prospect or a client or a vendor or somebody um, that you need to tend to, but there's other ones that you open. And the reason that you open them is because there's value. 
because it's something intriguing because you know it will help you in some way. And so there's, there's value to you engaging with that message. The reason messages go unopened is when on the receiver side, it's perceived that there's no value or if you're getting pitched to all the time, because nobody wants to be pitched to all the time. Um, you know, or if it's kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I signed up for this. I don't know why I'm getting this. I don't know what, what reason I would have to engage with this email. If that's going on in the reader's head, then that's why they're not going to open your email. So if we've built this relationship and uh, we, we've started that, it, how much does the subject line and, and the words that go with it, how much does that play into this in the open rate? Subject line is huge because if, if they're not intrigued enough by that subject, then they're not going to open it. They, you could have the best message in the world, but if they don't, if they aren't intrigued enough by that subject to open it, then it won't matter. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I like to think of it like this. We, we never want to do a bait and switch, right? We never want to say, you know, open this and win a million dollars. And nobody who's listening would do that anyway. But we want to make sure that it's consistent and congruent. But what I like to, what I recommend doing is you write your message and then when you go to write the subject line, just think about what is going to be intriguing in this message and would be intriguing to my audience. Let me put myself in the shoes of my audience and think what will get them to say, oh, yeah, that's something I want to read. Uh, good. So, Ms. Leanne, before we let you go today, we got time for one more question. Um, let's talk about frequency. So we've established that we want to have build a relationship. We want a compelling subject line. How much is too much? How much should we be communicating with our, our, our guests? Well, I'm a fan, if, if you can do it, I'm a fan of weekly emails because I feel that, um, you know, oftentimes people want, want to pull back on the consistency because they don't want to bother their subscribers. And that's a great um, thing to be aware of, making sure you're not sending too often. And sometimes if you pull it back and you, and you don't go often enough, people forget that they're on your list or forget who you are, and then they'll start to drop off or ignore your email, which is even worse. So I'm a fan of weekly. And I'm going to say this. I know weekly can sound daunting. And if you haven't been regular with it, weekly sounds terrible. So twice a month is the minimum, and which, again, is only 24 messages over the course of the year. And that will keep you in their boxes enough that they'll know who you are and not think that you're spamming, and it will let you create um, it, enough messages to build that relationship with them so they'll want to keep coming back and, and reading the messages that you're sending out. Great tips, Ms. Leanne, and I know you've got a, a lot more for us coming up in Orlando. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you very soon at our Bowl Expo. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Well, folks, Leanne has given us some great tips to ensure the continued growth of your business. So if you're ready to learn more about the role of email marketing and how it should work in your business, don't miss Leanne's Bowl Expo session this June in Orlando. You are not going to want to miss it. If you're ready to start improving your profitability, you can reach us anytime at education at bpa.com. So as we wrap up another edition of The Profit Break, remember, when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. This episode, as well as all our previous Profit Break episodes, are available 24-7 for you, your team, everybody else. Share it at BowlingUniversity.net. Plus, new episodes are available every month. Mark your calendar, watch your email, join us on Facebook, and hear about the latest episodes. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.